Hi everyone, it's Clive and it's time to start brewing again for the 2012-13 brewing season. Now before I start brewing I thought it might be a nice idea to show you some of the equipment that you need, some of the essentials for brewing beer. So let me just flip you around. And here we go. This is probably or two of the most essential bits of a kit equipment that I use for brewing. This one is my electric water boiler. This is a, a Brewpax 2 kilowatt boiler. It's an electric boiler. If we look inside, let's put that down there. You can see there's an element at the bottom. So it's like a jug kettle basically. So this is about a, a 29 litre capacity um, boiler. And it's got a strainer here, so any bits get captured before stuff is comes out of the tap here. So this cost me £150, so this is your biggest outlay. And I got this along with a few other bits and pieces from a company called Stonehelm. So have a look on Google. That's the first thing. The next most important thing is my insulated mash tun. So this is where you put your ingredients, so your malt mostly, into here. And you can see there's the lid. And it does look suspiciously like a cool box, and it basically is a modified cool box. And if you look in the bottom here again, there's some of that mesh which stops stuff from being transported through the tap. So the idea is that you fill up this up with malt, and uh, you put water uh, at about 67 degrees and you leave that to soak for a while to separate out the sugars from the malt. So this cost me about £75. So that's probably the next most expensive bit of equipment to buy. Your insulated mash tun. This is a copper tube which we've used for chilling the, the wort after you've boiled up all your ingredients uh, you've got a uh, liquor called wort which as you've got to cool down from 100 degrees C now if you just leave it to cool down on its own it takes ages it takes hours and hours however if you connect this up to an outside tap like I've got here you can cool down your wort in literally about 15 or 20 minutes it's a godsend it, it stops you from getting extremely frustrated Again, I, along with the, the, the boiler and the mash tun, I bought this from Stonehelm and this cost me just over 50 quid, which seems like a lot and some people out there might be able to make their own if they're clever enough, but I think it was a well w worth the investment. Next up we have the primary fermentation bin. Now this uh, you can get in a lot of places and cost you about, well it's less than a tenner, probably about eight quid that's right yeah about that and this is uh, roughly about 30 litre capacity and it's just basically a plastic bin the lid should be nice and nice tight air seal a little hole here for your airlock this is a classic airlock and I'll have a little little rubber grommet which goes in the hole here and then that just goes to the top here this thing's obviously in half filled with water and that stops any rubbish from getting into the stuff. This obviously needs to clean this one. So next up, so that's your primary fermentation bin. Next up is my pressure barrel. Basically that is the secondary fermentation stage. This one has got, so this is about uh, 30 litre capacity. This has got a, uh, a tap, a, a connector here for putting on, for putting in CO2. Now here we go. This is the CO2 this is a CO2 capsule and basically it fits inside this whoops oh, it fits inside this thing this thing is then just screwed on top of here and as you screw it down it then breaks the, the, the seal just there and that pumps all of the CO2 from here into the container and that then recarbonates your beer so there you go Another good investment. I've got all sorts of bits and bobs that I use when I'm brewing. This thing, just an ordinary metal shovel, and I use that for scooping up the malt into the mash tun. I've also got a couple of thermometers. These are about two or three quid each. I've also got a siphon. 
So this is obviously for siphoning off the the, uh, the from from the primary into the into the um, pressure barrel. So these aren't very expensive, and all sorts of wonderful bits and bobs which don't generally get used very often. Like bottle brushes. I generally don't use bottle brushes. I generally use sterilising tablets these days for cleaning stuff. If you leave if you leave uh, sterilising solution like this is filled up with sterilising solution long enough, it will actually lift most things. Really difficult to get into these things with a bottle brush. But I discovered that actually Grosch bottles with these flip top lids are probably the best things to use as long as you keep these things clean. Absolutely perfect because you'll never have to buy any crown cups again so get yourself some of these. Luckily a friend of mine gave me a whole supply of these and also I'm very proud of my little labels that I made. You can see, well you probably can't quite see actually, I printed up a whole bunch of these which I very proudly stick on Let's see if it will actually see. There we go, Mitchell Brewery, and it gives you the date and a little picture of me in my shed. Now, I've mentioned this book many times before, but this is uh, probably my uh, best uh, investment. This cost me £15 from, from, from the Campaign for Real Ale or Camera. So, this is full of recipes. Here we go, what have we got here? It's Exmoor Gold, and this just gives you the proportions of. of malt and hops and all the boiling times etc so for giving for various and I normally make a 25 litre batch of beer so this was a good investment so I recommend heartily recommend this book British Rail British Real Ale by Graham Wheeler also I'd recommend that you get yourself a uh, get yourself a subscription with camera it's about £23 a year and currently they've got 144,156 members. Uh, this is the end of September 2012, so pretty good going. With that uh, you get uh, a monthly subscription to the newspaper What's Brewing. You also get a quarterly subscription to the beer magazine. This is good because this actually does actually have some, um, some recipes as well, so worth looking into that as well. Websites. Um, let's think. I'm actually a member of... The Homebrew Forum, all one word, so if you look out for Clive JM, you'll find me on there. Uh, I've put up a couple of recipes and links to my home, my YouTube videos, which you've obviously found already, so uh, you won't need that. But So here we go, what, uh, what ingredients do we, do we need for brewing? Well, principally we use malt, hops, yeast and water. And what I've got here is a range of, of things that I've bought. This is left over from last year. Typically your hops will come vacuum packed to see in all the the hoppy goodness this is a classic it's a goldings hop so it's a, it's a great one that's about 100 grams that's that that cost about 2 pound 88 for that lot and when they're unwrapped you can see they expand right out so what else have we got we've got galena we've got more goldings styrian goldings we've got pilot other things for on the on the malt size, I don't have any, have any pale malt, malt, but that was all pretty much used up. But so uh, what we've got here, we've got crystal malt, we've got black malt, we've got chocolate malt, we've got flaked maize, we've got wheat malt, we've got torrified wheat. Also, what else have I got in here? I've got some roasted barley, which goes into Guinness. I've also got some Challenger hops here as well. And this little bag here is something called Protoflock. This is a finings. This is for trying to sort of settle out all the sed all the sort of sediment that stays in suspension in your beer. So you go from a cloudy to a clear beer. So you add some of that sometimes, sort of only two or three grams of that as well. So I'm actually just putting an order with uh, the, the, um, the suppliers. There's a, there's a company called Murphy, a Murphy Homebrew, if you Google that. Have a look on their website and then typically for a brew you need about five kilograms of malt so that will cost you about seven pound fifty a hundred grams of hops as i just said two pound eighty eight a little sachet, sachet of yeast for two quid and i've just worked out that the electricity cost you about one pound twenty so all in all you're looking at about 35p a pint when you're making beer which is a pretty good incentive Okay everyone, that was a bit of a gallop through the Mitchell Brewery equipment collection and this is in anticipation of brewing for the new season so watch this space and uh, have a look at my old videos so you can actually see how all of this stuff is put together to make beer. Cheers then, bye bye.